Thank you so much. So hello, everyone. And uh, my name is Kaz Iguchi. I'm a teacher at Kansai Soka High School. And I'm deeply honored to stand before you today. Um, the last time I came here, I, I also said this, but it's not easy bringing somebody from Japan. So I'd like to wholeheartedly thank the organizers of this event uh, for making it possible for me to be here and for all of us to be here. So thank you so much. Thank you. It's with this great appreciation uh, that today I would like to share with you what my high school, an example of what one high school, a proud UNESCO school, might I add, is doing uh, in Japan. And so I want to emphasize that um, not all high schools in Japan uh, do this kind of education. And in fact, uh, Japanese high schools in uh, general do not teach about the topic of nuclear weapons or World War II. It's rarely discussed, um, except for those schools in Hiroshima or Nagasaki. And another thing I want to emphasize is that I stand here as an ordinary teacher, as an ordinary citizen, uh, with this purpose to seek what each and every human being can do. And uh, not everybody can travel to Japan, um, and not everybody can have the chance to go to Hiroshima or Nagasaki, although it really should be on your bucket list. It's something that you really should do. Um, and not everybody will have a chance to meet with the A-bomb survivors, the hibakushas. Actually, this is a current challenge because uh, in Japan and internationally, uh, the average age of survivors has reached 85. And so the question, uh, what can the next generation, what can we, the youth, do? Uh, to protect and further create peace. And this is uh, my mission today of why I come all the way from Japan uh, to address this really uh, very uh, important question. And so my role today and tomorrow is to empower you uh, to find something that you can take back to your schools, uh, to your family, to your communities, uh, because I really believe that change can start uh, from the collective youth. So if you uh, look at the slide over here, so that was my trip two days ago. It's no biggie, it's just 15 hours, just sit back and relax. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, about third, uh, 11 hours in, you'll kind of see the peninsula of Japan uh, through your window, and you see some three stars. So one on the top is uh, Sapporo Soka Kindergarten. That's our kindergarten that we have up north. And then in the middle, uh, the orange, kind of hard to see, but the uh, star on the right is Tokyo. And so we have, uh, we have a high school there, and we also have a university, Soka University. And uh, to your left is my high school, Kansai Soka High School. And a little bit more in, uh, that's where Osaka is, and that's where I came from. And on to the left, uh, three hours to the left, three hours about uh, on a bullet train ride is Hiroshima. So we're pretty close. That's my high school, Kansai Soka High School. So, and that's in the springtime. <laughs> when I left, it was 20 degrees. Um, so this is Kansai Soka High School. It was founded in 1973 by our founder, Dr. Daisaku Ikeda. And each school is very unique. Uh, rather than adhering to a pedagogic, pedagogic, uh, pedagogical approach, uh, each Soka school uh, cherishes principles and mottos that are presented by the founder, uh, which becomes the pillar of our education and also a later a compass in life uh, as uh, students navigate through society. So at Kansai Soka High School, students, teachers, everybody, we treasure this motto that was presented in our first entrance ceremony by our founder, Daisaku Ikeda. Uh, Never build your happiness upon the misfortune of others. Please remember this. This motto is etched deep inside the hearts of our students as they strive to practice this motto in their daily life and uh, school experience. Maybe we can all say this together, just like the exercise before. Ready? Three, two, one. Never build your happiness upon the misfortune of others. That's going to be a key motto. So the core objective of our educational mission at Kansai Soka is to nurture global citizens who 
wholeheartedly devote to the values of peace, culture, and humanism. Global citizenship and this motto of never building one's happiness upon the misfortune of others are the two pillars upon which our educational philosophy stands. And the founder of our school system, his name is Dr. Daisaku Ikeda. He is a peace builder, a Buddhist, a philosopher, educator, author, and poet. He has many titles. He's, known, uh, he's very well known as the president of SGI, Soka Gakkai International, one of the world's largest and most diverse communi community-based uh, Buddhist associations. He is our founder uh, and also of many international institutions promoting peace, culture, and education. He's received over 400 academic honorary doctorates, uh, including uh, Guelph Humber University in Ontario and also Laval University in Quebec. Um, and uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Helfman uh, also mentioned about um, Gorbachev meeting uh, Reagan. And uh, if you actually go back in history, uh, Daisaku Ikeda had a dialogue with Gorbachev. He, they're very good friends, actually. And um, actually, uh, he played a big role in uh, Gorbachev meeting uh, Reagan, actually. So he is a promoter of peace through dialogue, and he is the founder of uh, Kansai Soka High School. And in his famous speech that he made at Columbia University Teachers College in 1996, uh, Ikeda proposed the following issues to be incorporated into all levels of education. So here it is. Peace education in which young people learn the cruelty and folly of war, just like we are doing, uh, to root the practice of nonviolence in human society. Environmental education to study current ecological realities and means of protecting the environment. Developmental education to focus attention on issues of poverty and global justice. Human rights education to awaken an awareness of human equality and dignity. So this was his proposal, and uh, Kansai Soka High School undertook a, an ambitious project to put these pro uh, proposals into our education. It was about 10 years ago. So for all of our students at our high school, we've created a program called GRIT, which stands for Global Research and Inquiry Time. And this integrated curriculum study course teaches students about global issues related to the four fields of environment, development, human rights, and peace. And in global citizenship seminars, we invite distinguished guest speakers from all around the world to give a talk about these four topics. And for those who can't get enough, we have optional courses. Uh, where we have weekly classes led by guest lectures uh, focusing on the four topics, where students have a chance to visit Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Tohoku, all these places in, in uh, Japan as well as California, providing first-hand exposure to learn about these four fields from experts. And furthermore, our selective program, it's an honors program called Learning Cluster, which I overlooked, uh, empowers students to apply their English language skills that they learn in their subject classes to study about global issues. And during my presentation, I'll delve more into the GRIP program and the field work that we have and the learning cluster program. And please, uh, you know, uh, think about how these kind of initiatives could be also implemented um, in your school as well. So uh, let's start with the GRIT program. So for all of our high school students, starting from grade 10, uh, students, uh, learn about global issues in general through various activities, and we consider this to be the input stage, to be more aware about what's, what's happening around the world and what kind of issues that we have. And then in grade 11, students team up in groups of three to four and pick a topic that interests them. And during this phase, students have the opportunity to present their research to university professors. They go visit different universities. And then in grade 12, uh, the entire grade of 360 students, we have, we have that amount uh, in a grade, engage in a model United Nations form, as you can see right here. Uh, each group of three to four students represents a country as ambassadors, creating a massive forum of representing 92 countries. Uh, the objective for all the countries is to come to a consensus drafting a resolution uh, for one global issue. And after the forum, uh, students uh, write essays on the topic that uh, they, from the viewpoint of the country that they represented, and they also write uh, English summaries that are taught in our English classes. We actually had this last week before I came. And then during our field work in California, students have the chance to meet with uh, 
former UN Under Undersecretary General Ambassador Chaudhry, where they present their MUN draft resolutions and receive feedback on what would happen if this was actually presented at the United Nations. And let's see here. So you can see uh, our students uh, acquire the knowledge and dive deeper into, uh, ver uh, into researching these issues and ver through various uh, experiences. And uh, one of them is a learning cluster. And learning cluster is designed for about 16 to 20 students who are interested to use their English language skills uh, to research global issues in English. And the program uh, tests students to um, use their English for academic research, discussions, and presentations. And in addition to developing these English skills, we teach the students critical thinking, leadership, problem-solving skills uh, through various activities and opportunities. And these English skills are then integrated to address the SDGs, and the students harness these skills to embark on research uh, projects, receiving guidance and support from our team teachers. Uh, over the past 10 years, we have dealt with a variety of different issues. Uh, these are just some examples. Uh, you can see the four uh, fields, peace, human rights, development, and environment. Um, but just recently, we have focused our attention solely on nuclear disarmament issues because we believe that these issues encompass the root of all global issues. And during the first semester of Learning Cluster, students learn the basic skills, the research skills, the general information of SDGs, uh, what it means to be a global citizen. We have workshops like that to build a foundation of the topic. Uh, and as students learn more and more, uh, maybe this is happening to you uh, right now, uh, they gradually become lost, confused, frustrated, and uh, some even are convinced of the deterrence theory and that uh, nuclear weapons are actually necessary. So as a teacher, what do you do in that kind of situation? Right? So we take them on a trip. <laughs> so this is an example of one of the trips that we did to Hiroshima. Please enjoy. Thank you. Uh, this was a trip back in 2016, then COVID hit, and then finally we uh, reinitiated the Hiroshima fieldwork this year. And we also had a fieldwork to Nagasaki, and uh, also students had the choice to go to uh, Monterey, California, where they could present their research at the James Martin Research Institute for Nonproliferation. So uh, this is a comment uh, from one of my students who went on this uh, fieldwork. And uh, actually, this was um, a conversation that she was having with her friends in the dormitory, and I just happened to pass by listening to it, and I said, wait, 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 could you write this down? And so this was what she was actually uh, sharing in just a very casual dialogue that she had with her friend. She said, I learned many important things through Hiroshima fieldwork. First, my views of nuclear weapons have changed. Before going on the fieldwork, I learned about nuclear deterrence theory, and I was somewhat convinced. Although I know how inhumane nuclear weapons are, I couldn't refute against the idea. However, through hearing the testimonies of hibakshas, visiting the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum, and listening to the poems of survivors, I was disgusted that we could justify having weapons that has the power to make people suffer this much. A world that has such weapons exist is like letting evil exist. This made me realize that international security that depends on threat is not correct, and that true international security should be based on trust. So before she went on this trip, she was convinced that deterrence theory works, and you can see a transformation in the way she began to see the problem. And we will look, this, uh, look into this a little bit more during my keynote tomorrow, but please think about what made her change. Of course, we can say it's the experience that she had during the trip, uh, but as I said before, not everybody can have the same opportunity. So I think there's something here. 
uh, that can help us realize the root of the problem and what we can actually do. And once students come back from their trips, you can imagine they're very eager to do something. So uh, this is when students break off into groups and start their research. And this year, not just nuclear weapons, but we wanted to have students do research projects uh, of nuclear weapons from five different perspectives. And so these uh, were the ones that the students chose. They chose gender, human rights, environment, energy, and generation, the generation challenge. And actually, you saw all of the, the exhibitions, right, the panels. Actually, there are 15 different challenges, different topics that the panel represents. One panel represents one kind of issue. So actually, uh, my students chose these topics after looking at all of the panels. They chose uh, the five topics based on the panels that we have here, actually. So this is something that maybe you could do as well. And since the pandemic, our learning cluster students have started collaborating with Guelph Humber University uh, in Ontario. And we've been meeting every two to three weeks to conduct research together in groups. Actually, we have a call tomorrow, uh, tonight actually. And our students are examining the issues from the perspective of not only Japan, but also from Canada. And we're very excited to see the outcome of this special exchange. And there are five stages to our research. First, uh, students make a research question and decide on a methodology and collect data. And after collecting data, they analyze their findings. And usually we, you know, after doing something like this, we would write a paper, right? But it's not like that. Uh, they become very creative. Um, after they find out uh, through their research what the problem really is or the discovery that they have uh, after the data collection, they think of projects that they can create um, based on what they found. So we had students in the past uh, make, um, make a manga, like co a comic book, to story tell these kind of issues to elementary school kids. Uh, that was interesting. Some made podcasts. Uh, some have created posters. Uh, some have started campaigns. So it's really up to the students' creativity of what they do with the research. And as students finish their uh, research projects in second semester, third semester is a chance for everybody to share. So these, these uh, activities include a trip to California where they present their research to high school students, to professors, experts in the field. Uh, and this year, I just came back from LA last month, uh, we're planning a visit to UCLA, University of San Diego, a University of Southern California, two local high schools, and uh, Soak University, that's also in California. We have in the past held uh, events with world uh, leading figures such as the Under, Gener Under Secretary General Ambassador Chaudhry, which I mentioned earlier, Dr. David Krieger from the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation. If you don't know about the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation, uh, you should definitely check them out. And uh, Dr. Lawrence Carter, a uh, dean from the Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, International Chapel at Morehouse College. And I hear that a uh, student from Morehouse College is also going to join us for this event. Has he arrived yet? Not yet, but he will be. So um, yeah, it's wonderful. And after they come back from these trips, uh, students have discussion sessions. Uh, they organize discussion sessions to share. Uh, they have presentation sessions, they share during our open campus for visitors, and they even create newspapers. Now that's one project that they like to do. And the final project of our learning cluster is publishing our work as a high school peace proposal, which is a collection of students' research that includes their hope for the future. And as they embark into university and find a job, and maybe some might do things related to nuclear abolition, but uh, you know, not all of them do, uh, most of them don't, but they come back to this and remember the kind of work that they did and also remember the hope that they had as a high school student. So that is our global citizenship program at Kansai Soka High School. And maybe there was something here that you found interesting that could be implemented in your school activities. And when I look back at the 10 years of uh, this program in the making, we didn't have 
a concrete plan, and we didn't know that things would turn out this way. But everything has and continues to stem from our founding principle and the heritage that we really treasure. And these are some of the gems that I found uh, being involved in these initiatives, which I'd like to uh, share with you. First is that the goal is to foster global citizens, and learning about nuclear weapons is the means to do that. We have in the past dealt with other global issues, but found that nuclear weapons are the most difficult, abstract, and it feels the most distant uh, from high school students' life. And yet, this issue, as you are learning today, directly relates to every single person and requires immediate attention. If students can make a personal connection with nuclear disarmament, then I think they can start to care about any kind of issue. But this is the most difficult, and this is where we start. Uh, nuclear weapons connects to um, almost all these kind of complex political uh, issues that we have in our world, and that's why it needs a multifaceted approach. And so by better, getting a better understanding of our situation of nuclear weapons, uh, students get a better grasp of our situation today. And, but by merely teaching nuclear weapons as knowledge is certainly not enough, and that's the danger. Uh, we need to foster the heart and build a sense of mission. Otherwise, this problem becomes intellectual, political, or unrelatable. And that's why I want to leave you with this last sentence. Uh, we want to foster somebody who is not only knowledgeable in the issue, but please find the answer to this sentence. As AI continues to develop, we are repeatedly asked this question of what makes us truly human. And education will be challenged to this task of responding. And that's exactly what I want to address in my keynote tomorrow morning. Lastly, I leave you with this quote by Daisaku Ikeda. The ultimate goal of education and research is the good of humankind. Learning is the means. Humanity is the end. We must never reverse these priorities. Knowledge acquired through the search for truth must be put to use for humanity. Thank you so much.